Welcome, everybody. We're here to talk about the Sensational Awards by the State Authorization Network. What is a Sensational Award? Well, it was established in 2015. It's an annual award that recognizes the outstanding efforts of SAN member institutions and organizations in developing a high quality, comprehensive solution to challenging state authorization issues. We, they establish processes and procedures to support compliance that requires creativity and vision. This compliant, these compliance staff members must understand the problem, conceptualize tools or procedures to address the problem, and then mobilize their campus communities for buy-in and collaboration on procedures which support the compliance and state and federal rules intended to best support educational opportunities and students. So we're very excited today to award C University of Cincinnati a 2022 Sensational Award in the category of Compliance Innovations. This category calls on SAN members to share institutional policies, tools, and inventive or novel compliance management practices to help solve a tricky compliance issue. So our colleagues from the University of Cincinnati will share the institution's award-winning project to develop a state authorization working group um, with the acronym SAWG. Um, and our colleagues are about to share how this group consists of a representative from each of UC's 13 colleges and the institutional research team. So this group acts as a primary source where data and reporting information is validated and collected. Their primary responsibility is to support the institution and the compliance team by gathering needed reporting documentation for out-of-state learning placements. So as we know, the US Department of Education federal regulations require that in order for an institution to participate in Title IV federal financial aid, that the institution must provide public and individual notifications for educational programs that lead to a professional license or certification that is required for employment in occupation in state. So to achieve this, the University of Cincinnati developed this working group with this series of liaisons across the institution to inform and maintain the public notifications on the website and then inform to prepare the direct notifications. So I'm very pleased today to introduce Don Kleinman, Assistant Vice Provost, Online Instruction and State Authorization Liaison, and Amy Davis, Associate Two from the University of Cincinnati. They're gonna share more details about their plan to incorporate these key stakeholders to pool information from their areas of expertise to make a more efficient process for compliance. So this working group provides a cost-effective, adaptable pathway to compliance that can be adapted by um, and for peer institutions nationally to manage out-of-state activity compliance. So without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Don and Amy to share more about their project. Don, Amy, welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. I am going to share my screen so we can get started. Let's see. This works. How's that? That Looks works? great. Excellent. Um, well, I want to first start off by saying thank you very much um, for that awesome introduction and also just the opportunity to share what Amy and I have um, created over the last couple of years as our saving grace to being able to be able to ensure that the integrity of the data that we're providing up to Sarah and also making sure our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed um, throughout this process. So um, what we've done is uh, create, as Cheryl said, a state authorization working group. But first, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about our institution, just so you have a sense of um, where we are and what we've done. Um, the University of Cincinnati, if you're not familiar, is a four-year public research one institution. It's a quite large institution made up of um, 14 colleges. We have 426 degree programs, 205 certificates, and of all of those, 124 are fully online programs and certificates. Our student population in total, um, as you can see, is around 48,000. Um, of those, you can see the how it 
separates out with undergrad and grad students, but our also our total online student population is 7,765 as of this week. <laughs> um, we have students represented in all 50 states and 121 countries outside of the U.S. So as you can see, just by this glance at who we are, state authorization is really important to us because we have to track, obviously, a lot of students across a lot of colleges, across a lot of programs. And so making sure we have that data integrity is essential. Um, and the fun part is it's just us. Um, it's just Amy and I. Um, we are part of uh the UC online department at, at the University of Cincinnati. We are a central department that supports our online, fully online programs and certificates. And Sarah has um, found its way into the UC online um, unit as the place where we are managing that, um, that piece of compliance. As you know, it's much more than just online programs. So we have had to really explore and reach out. It's also worth mentioning that Sarah is a, a portion of our job and duties um, and responsibilities. And um, so we're not able to dedicate a full time equivalent, one or even two of us, which the more we learn, the more we think we need to. <laughs> um, but uh, we can't ded dedicate that full-time staff to Sarah in our current um, situation. So with that being said, when we took this on about two years ago, we had a meeting of the minds and said, we need help and we need to find a way to do this. And how can we do that? And so we spoke with our dean, vice provost, and we brainstormed this idea of a state authorization working group. It is these 14 colleges that are home to all of these programs and all of these students, and they are the ones that know where their students are, what their students are doing, and so we engaged. And that's when we designed and developed the State Author Authorization Working Group. And so that State Authorization Working Group has a particular purpose. Um, its purpose is um, for them to be a representation and as an extension of Amy and I in their colleges. So we speak with them and teach them and inform them as much as we can about the, the needs of Sarah. We review the regulations with them and we help develop strategies to ensure the compliance of our programs, both with professional licensure, but then also our um, our enrollment data that we provide and our USLIP data that we provide. And these are our different representative colleges along with institutional research that um, without them, I'm not sure where we'd be. They, they pull all sorts of reports and do magic behind the scenes. Um, a little bit more about our group. These are our objectives. We try to maintain SARA and federal regulation compliance ensure college representatives have the information required to manage the college level compliance. We create central communication hub for all matters related to state authorization and collect and render annual reporting data as required by Sarah. I think it's important to call out that this is a working group. It is not a committee. It is not an advisory board. And we were really intentional about that word working because these folks by being members of this group really do have a responsibility. And um, they know that we meet often um, to give them updates. We work to create efficiencies wherever possible. So we know this is a heavy lift. And so we are trying to constantly work with everybody to see if we can find easier ways to supply the information that is needed. In fact, last year, Amy and I kind of went on a on a Sarah tour to all of our colleges. We met with every one of them um, and we talked about how they gather this information in-house. 
we thought initially that we would do so and we would find a common thread and be able to do something that would work for everyone. We very quickly realized everyone does something differently. <laughs> and so we needed to kind of back up and then um, create something different for each college. And that might sound overwhelming, but I think for us, it was easier to do what was best for the college in order for us to receive the information in the way that we could easily then pull it together and report it the way it needs to be reported. So while it seems inefficient to do it 14 different ways, it actually ended up being the efficiency that we put into place last year. Um, I would also add that these folks were at first, I think, a little concerned about the amount of, of work and lift, but we were quick to ensure to all of them that many hands make light work and that this has to be done for all of the reasons we, we know. And we were lucky that they understood quite quickly and they themselves identified people within their colleges. The, the representation on the working group are mostly associate deans at the individual colleges, but they each over the years have assigned a person to help them do this work. So while we are a small team of Amy and I with a fraction of, the res of our job responsibilities dedicated to Sarah, we feel much more confident in being able to do this work because we feel like we have an extension out in all of the colleges. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time explaining how we got there, or if you're interested in creating such a, such a group, I it's really been the the saving grace for us. So I absolutely recommend it if, if you have an opportunity. But some things that we did in order to get this group together was first develop a network. Who are the folks in the colleges that are doing this work? And we did that by meeting with the college's senior leadership to explain the work first and then start to identify who is the right person to be the representative on this working group. So that started creating the network and the conversation so that when our dean developed the charge, and that's that next um, bullet there, is obtaining upper leadership buy-in, our dean is the one that created the charge. He then went to fellow peer deans and explained the purpose at the dean level as to why this was already working. We had already spoken to all the colleges, so they kind of knew it was coming. That, I think, helped a little bit. And so when the deans were able to bring it to the associate deans, somebody was able to say, oh, yes, I know what this is, and I can take it, or this is the person that can take it. So it wasn't a huge surprise. I'm sure all of you have experienced when you use the word compliance, eyes get really big. And so this helped this be a little easier to sell and get the buy-in from each college to have a liaison. Um, and part of that conversation was making the benefits of such a group really clear. As we've already stated, many hands make like work. A small central staff can potentially, you know, support a large project successfully if they have this support. Um, and then the responsibility is shared across units. So there isn't any one individual or one unit that's fully responsible. And then data integrity is ensured when vetted through college representatives who know the pro programs and students. Left to Amy and I, we would be forced to make assumptions and we try really hard not to do that. By being able to bring it to the college level, people who know the students, know these programs, know you know, the licensure information, we can feel a lot more comfortable and confident about the data that we're sharing back to Sarah. So those are just some things when you're thinking about whether or not a group like this would, would make sense in your institution, that was kind of the approach that we took and it worked pretty well for us. And, and I would say, even though people may not, you know, 
spend every day thinking about Sarah, this group allows there to be an understanding across the institution. And when we get together, everybody's very willing to do their part. And so Amy and I constantly tell them if there's a better way, we're willing to hear it. And I think because we're willing to make things more efficient, they're willing to give us the work and the effort needed to create these reports and pull this information together. And that's us. It's kind of short and sweet, but it really is high impact. Um, and it's it's a group that we rely on all the time. Um, we have each one of them, I should have stated also when we have an email that comes in and they ask questions, students from all over about different programs, each one of these are our contact to make sure we're giving that program advice correctly. And so they're they're at our fingertips at all times. And, and because of that, we feel that we can confidently do this work, even if it's not our full-time job. So we're honored to receive this award. We thank you all. And I hope this was helpful. This was wonderful. Thank you so much, Dawn. And I know your work too, Amy, along with that. Um, so thanks for going through this explanation. I think one of the things that we talk to our members about a lot um, is the um, development of strategies to use the key stakeholders at the institution because it is a heavy lift for one person. They don't not have the expertise in all these various areas. And so to actually you know, pool together folks um, to manage out-of-state activity compliance, because as we know, reciprocity is a piece, but then we have federal and we have other program approval type things that have to do with um, the out-of-state activity compliance. So you really have captured all of that. Um, so I just have one question, and I wonder if you could share with us a little bit about how you got buy-in. How did you get them to, you know, you talked about, you know, that there were concerns that it would be too much, but was there like a, a often we hear from our members, I'm just not going to be able to get them to agree to this. How, what was the magic word that you got them to, to jump in? Sure. I think, I think there were, there was probably many words. <laughs> um, I think, I think um, having our Dean speak to the other deans and talk about the compliance and the kind of he probably used the more strict words like, um, you know, Title IV funding and compliance and must have and those kinds of words. But I think for us, when we got that team together, you know, once they were assigned to to the to the working group, I think for Amy and I, I it was really important to say, hey, guys, we understand this is one more thing that you have to do. It's one more thing that we have to do too. And we're just learning. It was at the time that we had just taken this on. So it felt very, very large. And we kind of said, let's help each other out. And we really focused on making this, listen, this is something that has to get done. What's the easiest way to do it? So we immediately started into, some of them were familiar with it. They're like, yeah, somebody used to ask me to run this report and it was really awkward. It was really strange. And I'm like, well, tell me about that. And so we really dug into the details of how it was done in the past and it was felt a little random or it wasn't something that they understood they were doing. They were just doing because somebody told them to do it. So we dug into that. We were able to give them history. We were able to give them the why. And then we were more than willing to say, let's blow up the system if it makes it easier for you. And I think the minute they realized this wasn't something being done to them and that they could contribute to offering up advice on how to do it best moving forward, I think everything just kind of was like, oh, okay, we have to do it. But they're willing to listen to me when I say, you're setting up a system that doesn't work for me because that's not how I track my students. You know, we have one particular college that she tracks her students in this very particular way and it does not match the way others do it. Okay, well then you don't follow this. You just give us that. And she just kind of went, really? I'm like, of course, why would I make you change what you've been doing for years? And so I think Having those conversations and that realization that we're here to make this easy because we need it to be easy too, 
Um, I think that had a lot of buy-in from the team. Cause when we get together, they genuinely are like, okay, what do we need to do? How do we do this? You know, they're in it for that hour or 30 minutes that we chat and do check-ins. Um, that, that's so fantastic. I think that was helpful. Oh, that's fantastic because we talk about this a lot, but you're showing the steps you went through and you're showing your flexibility. You have outcomes, desired outcomes, but you're flexible in the process to achieve right. the outcomes. And, right. you know, I appreciate you taking that step by step because I think that's going to be really informative to other institutions who want to do something like this, but have not been successful thus far. But you've, you've given them some um, things to go with to consider as they try at, at their institutions. So thanks for that very thorough explanation. That was wonderful. So, um, so folks, just so that you know, um, this recording and the recordings of the other um, Sensational Awards for 2022 uh, will be available on the SAN website. So you can go to the Sensational Award page on the SAN on the SAN website, and you'll gain access to the recordings and to the materials that have been shared uh, by all of the award winners. Plus, you can find the previous year's winners information as well. And we hope that those will serve you um, as some ideas for building compliance strategies at your own institution. We're really grateful to Don and Amy for being able to share with us this collaboration um, with our network, the way that they've provided the information about their tool is really appreciated and really what is the foundation of our network for the interactions of our, our members. So thank you to Don and Amy uh, for their time today. So um, thanks everyone. And uh, we will be talking with everyone for the um, opportunity for Q&A at an upcoming open forum. Thank you.